let's just take a little bit of time to run through some of our vector calculations, but using the three-dimensional vectors. So this is the last page of a handout I'm using in my classroom, but anybody that's viewing uh, can certainly see the questions I'm uh, drawing from. So vectors in three dimensions, uh, if we call the vector V, how clever is that? You can use the physics notation so some scalar times i and some scalar times j and some scalar times k i j k notation and if you're in my classroom i'm not offended if you don't use the hat symbols on those but your physics teacher or linear algebra teacher or other teacher they may have opinions so you just sort of adapt to the notation they have Think of it like uh, slang. You know, they use they talk differently in that course than they do in this course, but it's pretty close to the same. And I definitely, as a teacher, prefer to use the component form where you can see all the components, especially the zeros that might not always seem so visible. But I don't need you to use this notation. You can use that notation. So, right off the bat, let's... Uh, get a vector that starts at the point 3, 4, negative 2 in three dimensions and goes to the point 0, 9, 0. So vector u is what it's going to be called. All right. From 3 to 0 is a loss of three units in the x component of this vector. From 4 to 9 is an increase of five units in uh, the y direction and from negative 2 to 0 is an increase of 2 units in the z direction. So this vector has components negative 3 comma 5 comma 2 or negative 3i plus 5j plus 2k. So pretty straightforward set up there. So what was this notation again? Oh yeah, this is a notation for magnitude. Of course, the textbook uses the double bars around it, but we're going to draw enough of this symbol that um, use the single bars. Most of my grad professors used it, um, so I don't feel bad using it that way. And as we've seen, that magnitude is, uh, so be negative three squared is nine, and five squared is 25, two squared is four, um, so 29 square root of 38, or slightly more than six units, if we were measuring it as a decimal value. Okay, now, what if we wanted a unit vector in that same direction? Notice I'm not attempting to draw this in three dimensions. My own skills are, we'll say, lacking. But primarily, we're looking at the computation aspect of it. And if we want to change the length from a little bit more than six, then we need to divide the components by a little bit more than six. That was called a scalar multiplication. It basically is a vector where you take this scalar here, 1 over root 38, and multiply it by vector u. That takes the vector's length and divides it by this much, so it should have a magnitude of 1, which we would call the unit vector. So let's go ahead and distribute That would be negative 3 over root 38, 5 over root 38, and 2 over root 38. To verify that the magnitude of 1 is not really a difficult calculation at all, and I completely encourage you to do it. If this were like a trig or pre-calculus class, I'd probably take that extra time right now. Um, but we do not have the extra time. 
Right. You do. Just in here I don't. So, an adjustment. How do we write a vector that's in that same direction of negative 3, 5, and 2, but have it with a magnitude of exactly 15 units? And again, I, I liken this to if you were programming a racing video game and you wanted the vehicle to have a specific speed or magnitude, um, you would start with a unit vector and then you'd multiply by whatever the number is. And so it basically is 15 times 1 over root 38 multiplied by the vector u. So what's 15 times negative 3 is negative 45. And 15 times 5 is 75 over root 38. 2 times 15 is 30 over root 38. a little bit uh, messy to at uh, first glance, but um, it's not too difficult to verify that its magnitude is 15 exactly. Okay, what's next on the playlist here? Oh, another vocabulary term I have to go back and remember. Resultant. Uh, that was what we got when we added the two vectors. That's not an AND symbol. That is a legitimate plus sign. So U plus V equals 7 plus 2 is 9. I negative 5 and 5 is 0j. Now you have to choose. Are you going to write 0j or are you going to leave it blank because your pre-algebra teacher says it was okay? I'm going to start with the pre-algebra teacher here. 1 minus 4 is minus 3k. So if you're a physics student, you would undoubtedly write the vector that way. Now, if you write it in component form, then you would see the zero as a, a legitimate value. And again, I would argue if you're in computer science, you have to put a zero in that empty data component so the, uh, the program doesn't crash because of a, of a missing value. That's not too difficult. All right, we're almost there. One more resultant. Let's just add these two vectors together. U plus V equals 17 minus 17 would be, I'm going to go straight to component form, 0. 3 minus 3, that would be 0 again. And negative 8 and 8 would be 0 again. Okay, physics students. How do you write this vector? in this kind of notation when there are no positive or negative values, there are only zeros. Do you write zero i just to have a placeholder? What do you do with that? Well, if you write it in component form, this is it. You can see all the zeros, there are values filled in. The textbook and other books like it will write the zero but they will call it zero vector. They will literally call this the zero vector. It's sort of like you're sitting in a spinning office chair at a point, but you have no magnitude. You might be facing a specific direction, but you can't tell because there's no magnitude to see what the pathway would look like. It's called the zero vector. I'm a big fan of this notation here because it shows off the zeros, but I have no trouble with this. But there is one possible complication, and that's what we're going to end with on this little sheet here. Okay. Well, last question. What is the magnitude of this vector? What is the magnitude of the vector we just calculated? 
the magnitude of zero, zero, zero. If I run through my calculations, that will come out to be zero. That's supposed to be a zero. This zero is a number though. It's the length of that little dot on the paper. It's just one dimension, it has no length. This is zero, the scalar or number. That's not the same as zero the vector. So if you want me to believe that you're giving me the zero vector, you have to put the vector symbol on it, or you can write it that way. This is zero the number, it's always gonna be zero the number. Well, it might be the letter O sometimes in words. We'll give them a little bit of credit. All right, there's your 3D vector examples to work with.